Well, welcome everybody to week 527 <laughs> in our current teaching series, The Righteousness of God. I think I was a junior in high school when we started this series. I'm pretty sure I, I did the math, figured that out this week. I'm just kidding. It's been awesome, hasn't it? It's been an awesome time. It's been a long series, our longest series, but it's been great. We've been really diving into God's Word and really taking one section of, the ch of Romans, the book of Romans, one chapter and often one section of a chapter at a time. So it's taken us a little time, but I hope you've grown in your faith. I know that you've learned some doctrine. I know that we've learned the gospel together, and it's been, it's been great. So I'm excited to finish it today. Chapter 16, and we do a whole chapter together today, and we'll finish it out. Uh, but let me just tell you about this first. Next week, we're going to kick off a brand new Christmas series called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And it's going to be about the theology behind the song. And so we'll be singing the song, and we'll be talking about it each week in the sermons, and we'll finish the series during our very first Christmas Eve services. We're having Christmas Eve services. Yeah, we're excited about that. On Christmas Eve, the 24th, and it'll be at 4 o'clock and 5.30. So you won't want to miss that. Make sure you make plans to attend. But today, we're going to finish Romans together. We're going to tackle Romans 16. And our final theme today is this. The theme today is everyday people. Everyday people. My favorite Bible commentator is William Barclay, and he recalls a famous story in one of his books. And in it, he tells how Jesus, after the cross and the resurrection, returned to his glory in heaven, still bearing the marks of his suffering on his body. That is the marks from suffering on the cross for you and for me. And when he gets to heaven, one of the angels says to Jesus, you must have suffered terribly for men and women down there. I did, said Jesus. Do they know about what you did for them? Do those people know? Asked the angel. No, said Jesus. Not all of them yet. Only a few of them know about it so far. And, said the angel, what have you done so that they should all know? Well, said Jesus, I asked Peter and James and John to make it their business to tell others. And then those others to still tell more others as well. Until the furthest on the widest circle has heard the story. The angel looked doubtful. For he knew what poor creatures human beings were, those everyday kind of people. Yes, the angel said, but what if Peter and James and John forget? What if they grow weary of the telling? What if way ahead in the 21st century, people fail to tell the story of your love for them, Jesus, what then? Haven't you made any other plans than just everyday people? Back came the answer of Jesus. I haven't made any other plans. I'm counting on them. Counting on who? Those everyday people. As we finish the book of Romans together today, you're going to see that Paul, the writer of this book, who most wouldn't consider an everyday person, he's kind of a big deal. The Apostle Paul is famous to Christians for sure. But you're going to see in the very first portion of chapter 16, the first 16 verses to be exact, that he just greets a bunch of everyday people, men and women just like you and just like me. And when I say just like you and just like me, I really mean it. There are men in this list. There are women, which is a huge deal in the first century, by the way. And Paul is sure to greet these women, and he's doing it for a purpose. There are young people on the list, and there are old people on the list. And there is a vast ethnic diversity, class diversity. It's a list of literally everyday people, people like you and me. You see, Paul understood something, and you're going to find it out with me today as we dive into this together. And this is your first fill in the blank if you'd like to take notes, and I encourage you to do it if you would. He wanted to make sure we understood this. 
It's something we have to know before we walk out of here together today, in fact, and it's this. Number one, God uses everyday people. Paul knew it. He understood it. You and I have to as well. If we're going to get the context of chapter 16, we've got to get this right. God absolutely uses everyday people. I think you'll get the picture as we'll see Paul start to personally greet some of the everyday people that helped him spread the gospel. God used these everyday people. In fact, they were necessary in order for Paul to be able to do what God had called Paul to do. So take a look, and when we read this, it's a big chunk of scripture, so get ready for it. But I want you to focus in on the names. Make sure you focus in on the names. Let's start with verse one. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a woman who is a deacon in the church in Centria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs. Listen why, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me, Paul says. Verse three, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I'm thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. They opened up their home to the church. Greet my dear friend, Epinitus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. Verse six, give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who were in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ before I did, Paul says. Verse eight, greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our coworker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apellus, a good man whom Christ approves and give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Don't greet the narcissists, but greet the people from the household of Narcissus. Just making sure you're paying attention. Verse 12, <laughs> verse 12. Give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers, and to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for the Lord. I love that phrase, it shows up a few times. Working so hard for the Lord. Verse 13, greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own and also his dear mother who has been a mother to me. Give my greetings to Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give my greetings to Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and to Olympus and all the believers who meet with them. Greet each other with a sacred kiss, kiss that Christian kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. Now, here's what might happen to us when we get to a chapter like this. We might be tempted to skip over a chapter like this in the Bible unless we're looking for baby names. You know, if you're looking for baby names, you've got a lot of options here. And sometimes, you know, you're not sure what to do, and so you go to a chapter like this. Like, I guess it's got to be biblical, and this will be unique for sure. But I want you to focus in on this chapter, and when you see them in other chapters as you read your Bible in your own quiet time, because when you skip over these chapters, what you have to see is that you would miss yourself. You see, when we miss these names, we actually miss ourselves. And I'm not talking about seeing your actual name there. I'm talking about what these people actually represented. Everyday people that were necessary in the spread of the gospel that Paul had committed his life to. Did you hear the name Phoebe? She was a woman deacon, a woman entrusted to carry this letter. She likely carried the actual letter of Paul to the church in Rome. She's a woman that God had raised up and had used powerfully in many ways. In some translations, she's called a benefactor. That is, she donated, she contributed wealth to the ministry because it took money to do that ministry. Did you hear Priscilla and Aquila? Some of you recognize those names if you've studied your Bible. It's that same Priscilla and Aquila, those tent makers from Acts chapter 18. These people had a vocation, a regular everyday person with a regular everyday job but they also opened up their own home to the church, like many of you do in our small groups. And so they opened up their homes, but guess what? They were Jews, and they were also Christians, so they were super persecuted in the first century. So they would flee, and they would have to live all over. They were nomadic, really. But when they found a home and found shelter, they didn't keep it to themselves. They would open it up to the church. Did you know that Paul wrote the first letter to the church in Corinth from Priscilla and Aquila's house? It was their house in Ephesus at the time. And that's where he penned that letter that we now cherish today. But it happened because some people were willing to open up their home. Everyday people, normal vocation, allowing themselves to be used of God. 
Did you hear the name right alongside those faithful believers? It was that first convert from Asia, Epinetus. I want you to notice men here, women here, ethnic diversity. And I could go on and I could point out how there's 13 names on this list in chapter 16 that they show up in inscriptions or other historical documents which have to do with the emperor's palace in Rome. Or how Junius is a female name and she's also given the title of apostle in the first century. Or how even in the highest of highs, in the emperor's palace, you can also see a name that's the lowest of lows. It's a slave's name, Ampliatus. You can do your own deep dive on the names, and I think it's worthwhile to do it, but I'm a bottom line guy, so let me give you the bottom line. The bottom line is this, and I don't want you to miss this today. It is God's plan to use everyday people, just like these on the list, and just like you, and just like me, in order to spread the gospel. So it got me thinking about everyday people that I know. So I gotta ask you a question. Did you ever hear of Lester Jarvis? <laughs> Let me tell you about Lester Jarvis. He showed up wearing a shirt and a tie to a little church meeting at the Crown Plaza in Enfield, Connecticut. But he had this ability to lead worship. So he got up there in his shirt and tie and his Reba McIntyre headphone microphone. And he was rocking the guitar and singing. When we were just this little tiny church. Well, Lester was up here today. I don't know if you noticed him, but he doesn't wear the shirt and tie anymore. We got to him. We finally got to him. <laughs> Casual dress, serious faith. He had a hat on today. He had a Taylor guitar t-shirt on. I want to tell you some words that Paul the Apostle would say about a guy like Lester Jarvis. He has worked so hard for the Lord. Amen. Have you heard of Rachel Adams? Some of you have never heard of her and probably never would have if I didn't mention her name, but let me give you a little phrase that Paul might say about Rachel Adams. She's a patron of many, the little ones especially. Rachel's back there in New Day Kids. She's the team lead for Junior Kids Church, and she loves on those kids, and she teaches them all about Jesus while we're in here learning about him as well. Did you ever hear of Russ Longo? Russ Longo's the guy you need in the 21st century when the church parking lot is full. He will find you a spot, even if the only spot left is in a tree. I mean, he's gonna find it for you. <laughs> he's gonna keep your kids safe when they're walking across the parking lot. He's gonna smile at you while he does it. And he's just gonna do it in this wonderful way. And I wanna tell you what Paul would say about a guy like him. Paul would say this, he's a good man. And the Lord picked him out to be his very own. That's my friend Russ. Anna Gover is a name you might know, but not many of you did know her when she started a small group for young adults, and there were five people in the group total, including herself. Well, let me tell you what Paul would say about someone like Anna. She worked hard in the Lord, and now she's our full-time youth pastor and young adult pastor. My sermons are already too long, so I can't keep listing names, but I have a list here in my hand. It's 118 people in Planning Center that are gonna serve today on Sunday across our three services, either in person or online. And there's just name after name after name on this list of everyday people. <laughs> everyday people that God is using to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's my point? My point is the same point that Paul had in greeting all of these people in the first 16 verses of chapter 16. It's so that you can see that God uses everyday people. God uses them. And not only is he using them, he's counting on them. There will be around 1,200 adults and kids that attend today across our three services. And as grateful as I am for my kinsmen, my fellow workers in the Lord, as Paul would say, here's what that actually tells me. If 1,200 people are gonna attend across three services and I've got 118 on the list, here's all I know. There's some of you out there that God still wants to use. There are people right now listening to the sound of my voice that I know God wants to use because I know that God uses everyday people. So my question for you today is this. The application is, will you let him? Will you let him? And you might ask the question, well, why would I? And my answer to that is because he wants to use 
a person just like you, a person just like me. He wants to use everyday people to spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And not only does he want to use us, he's counting on us. That's the first thing we learned today from chapter 16 in those first 16 verses is that God uses everyday people. But here's something else we learned if you're still taking notes. It's your next fill in the blank. He uses everyday people, but everyday people have problems. Everyday people have problems. I've heard it said that there are no perfect churches. And even if you could find one, as soon as you showed up, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. (laughs) And all the spouses said, amen. (laughs) Some of you are mad, like the preacher's offending me today? What's up with that? Like, Why did I come to sit and be offended? You see, some people come to New Day from another church hoping it will be perfect for them. But I've got bad news for you because I already go here. (laughs) So I promise you, this church is not perfect. Handsome, yes. (laughs) I didn't get enough amens on that one, I just want to say that out there. My wife and my mother, maybe. (laughs) But you know it's not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect church. Because everyday people go to perfect churches and make them imperfect right off the bat because perf- people have problems. Everyday people have problems. So listen to this about New Day Church. It's not perfect. But here's what we're committed to at New Day. What we're committed to here, a bunch of imperfect everyday people, we're committed to the authority of God's word. God's word is the authority here at our church. So at our church, these imperfect people that you'll meet, we don't tell God's word, God's word what to do. God's word informs us. That's the way we live here. See, what you're going to see in verses 17 to 20 today is what Paul is getting at. He's not talking about perfect people. He spent all of Romans talking to us about how we could never achieve the righteousness of God on our own. It's why we needed a Savior. What you're going to find him talking about in verses 17 to 20 is how imperfect people, people with problems, need to make sure they find teachers and churches where the truth is proclaimed because that is going to be the solution. Here's what Paul knew. Paul knew that the greatest source of your problems, and we've all got them, but the greatest source of your problems as an everyday person, they come up when you abandon the truth. The greatest source of your problems in life will be when you abandon the truth. So Paul, in his last-ditch effort, in the last chapter of this letter that he's writing to the church in Rome, he wants to give you one last thing. And when I think about that, I think, man, if he's going to say one last thing, what's that last little thing? He couldn't help himself. He had to give you one last little bit of information before you go. And here's what he says. Take a look, verse 17. I make one more appeal. Here's what I couldn't hold off. I had to say it one more time. My dear brothers and sisters, watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith, how do they do it? Teaching things contrary to what you've been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk, glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Verse 19, but everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. Paul's so proud of the church in Rome. This makes me very happy, he says. I want you to be wise in doing right. I want you to keep that path that you're going on and stay innocent of any wrong. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. You see, some people go to different churches because they're just running from people problems. And they show up at a church like New Day and they get a little discouraged because all of a sudden they see, man, there's everyday people here too. And they got a bunch of problems too. Even that pastor up there does. And it's discouraging to them because if you go looking for a perfect church, you'll never find it. But some people run to New Day because the church they were attending, they were doing what Paul was warning about. At some point, they lost their way when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they stopped preaching the truth of the gospel. They got away from studying the Bible like the book of Romans. They got away from the theology that says you and I, no matter who you are that walked in today, you're a sinner in need of a savior. You see, a lot of churches, they don't even talk about that word sin anymore because people don't like it. It's a little offensive. I don't want to be told where I don't measure up. 
I want you to tell me something feel good so that I can get on my way for the rest of the week. And people have found that, and then they followed what Paul is saying, and they ran from that because they knew that the only solution to their problems would be the truth. And when you're in a problem and you're in a mess and you have a bad situation, I'll tell you right now, what you don't need is someone patting you on the back and telling you you're going in the right direction. You need someone that loves you enough to tell you the truth, even when the truth can hurt. You see, those other churches, they might use smooth and flattering speech, and that disguises itself as loving and beneficent. And they use terms like tolerance and diversity, but they use them out of context. By the way, tolerance and diversity, it shows up in verses 1 to 16 in Romans chapter 16. But when you use those, those words out of context, what you do is you lead people astray and you convince them that their life is heading in a good direction when God's word is saying, no, 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 I love you enough to tell you, come back to the truth. Here's what you need because we are all sinners in need of a savior and, and I don't do you any favors by hiding that from you. You see, the truth is we're all sinners. We're all in the sinner boat together. And we all need that same Savior. John MacArthur, in his commentary on this section of Scripture, writes this. I'm going to read it to you because I think it's powerful. He says, The right response of believers to false teachers, especially those who teach their heresy under the guise of Christianity, is to not debate those people or dialogue. Nope. When you find that, we are to turn away from them, to reject what they teach, and to protect fellow believers, especially new converts and the immature from being deceived, confused, and misled. Amen. So here's the question to you. How do you apply that to your own life? You're already coming to New Day. <laughs> and I'm telling you, New Day's doing our best to preach the truth of the gospel. And we're not afraid to talk about things like sin here. So how do you apply that? Well, here's what happens in the 21st century, even if you attend New Day. At any one moment, you can have 50 other preachers in your inbox, 50 other preachers in your newsfeed. You could see 50 other preachers on TikTok this week while you're still attending New Day and you say, New Day Church is my church. I'm not saying to just get rid of all those. I'm sure many of them are wonderful and are preaching the gospel. And I'm sure many of those are building you up. But here's what Paul would say, so I'm going to say the same thing to you. Watch out. You got to watch out. Paul, in his last ditch effort, says there's going to be a lot of people that are going to preach the truth, and it's amazing, but some are going to come in the guise of Christianity but they're actually going to use it for their own self-interest, for their own gain. How many followers do they have on TikTok or Instagram? Sometimes they're going to use it to get power over other people. And I guarantee you, every single time, if you have a heretic, if you have someone who's preaching a false gospel, they're always going to do it for money, for personal wealth and personal gain. At New Day, for the last two weeks, we've been raising money for our Christmas offering but if you've listened carefully, it's not so our lead pastor, Mike, can have a G6 plane, okay? I promise you that. It's not so that he can have a beach house. He's got a house that's too small for all of the people that are in his house, okay? I promise you that. So it's not for anything like that. Why have we been raising money for a special Christmas offering above and beyond the tithe? It's exactly because of this point that Paul talks about. It's because we know that New Day Church is committed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will not stop talking about sin and sinners because we're all one of them and we need a savior. And my only solution for you is not to just get better. It's to put your faith in Christ who can save you. It's to put your faith and trust in a holy God who made a way for you when you could have never earned it yourself. And not every church does it. Mike talked about it a couple weeks ago. A pastor took over a church that for 20 years it had existed. And when he got there, he realized most of the congregation had never heard the gospel. A church can exist for 20, 30 years and never preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, there are churches that can keep the lights on in the hallway, but the light of the gospel isn't there anymore. And that's why there needs to be a New Day church in every location. So that's why we're committed to it. Now, there's some wonderful churches that are doing what God's called them to do. And God bless them. We, we, we bless them. We want them to succeed. The Big C Church needs to preach the gospel. But we know what God's called us to do. And we know he's calling us into Massachusetts for the next location. So that's why we will ask for people to give. It's not for our own gain. It's so the gospel can be preached. Why would we care about that? Because where there are people, there are problems. But Jesus is counting on us, everyday people, to spread the truth of the gospel. What's the truth? 
It's what we've been studying in this entire book, that there's righteousness to be found. Not through what you can earn. Not through your good, good deeds list. There is righteousness, right standing with God that you have access to do, but not because of anything you've done. It's by placing your faith in Jesus Christ, God's one and only son that he sent to die in your place for your sin so you didn't have to be punished for it. You couldn't have earned it. There was only one way out, and Jesus was the way. That's what the entire book has been telling us, and that truth can be lost even in churches. So God's calling everyday people, even you everyday people that have problems to make sure we find a church and become a church that spreads the truth because the truth will set you free and the truth will be the solution to your problems. We're almost done, but I had to deal with a whole chapter, so give me a break. (laughs) My smooth-talking lips are tired, but we can't miss this final point. Here's number three, if you're still with me. What else do we learn in Romans chapter 16? Number three is God is able to strengthen everyday people. God is able to strengthen everyday people. Why is it so important to Paul to make sure people stayed obedient to the true doctrine, doctrine, to the true word of God? Here's the simple reason. Because God uses his word that is preached in churches like New Day Church to strengthen and uphold and undergird wonderful, everyday, imperfect people. Because that's his plan. He's counting on us. Everyday people with all of their problems, just like my lovely friend, Jessica. Why don't you take a look at the screen? I want to share with you what God has done in my life through the ministry of New Day Church and why I am so excited about New Day's next location. Serving and celebrate recovery here at New Day is my life commitment. It's a safe place where we learn how to deal with life on life's terms as we recover from sin, hurts, habits, and hangups. I've been through divorce, abandonment, death, abuse that led to suicidal thoughts, anxiety, depression, alcohol abuse, and broken relationships. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it says to examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. My entire life I identified as a Christian, but was living a life in rebellion to God's word. I was hopeless, powerless, and burdened by condemnation, guilty before God. He gave me the gift of salvation and repentance as I finally surrendered control of my life. I confessed my shame and guilt to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and was born again. Miracles happen through obedience to God's word, and when I began obeying his word, my life began to change. My brother tragically overdosed, but God already provided a support team, and I remained strong. Applying the 12 steps and eight principles to my life, I learned here at New Day through the CR program have helped me receive healing, restored my relationships, and has given me a new purpose. God took my mess and turned it into a message as evidence of my changed life has been a witness to my three children as they have all now come to a saving faith in Christ. I am sharing my story because rescued people rescue people, and God wants to use the ministry of New Day Church to rescue more people just like me. This is why I'm so excited for our next location. It'll be a place where others can find the same hope and life change that I have found in Christ. Amen. You know, the person she's baptizing, the man that she baptized in that video, that was her son. He got saved between the time we filmed that video and our baptism that happened last Sunday, and he got baptized last Sunday. How cool is that? She's an everyday person. She had some problems. You guys have problems that she referenced too. But she said, rescued people, rescue people. Everyday people, God wants to use to snatch somebody else out of this life that's over-promising them and under-delivering every day. Because God's got something so much more. That is the church, my friends. That is what God's up to. That's his plan. 
the Peters, the James, the Johns, and all the female names. God's ready to use you. That's the church. Paul writes in these final verses, what is God able to do when everyday people, even with their problems, allows God to strengthen them? allows the truth that's preached, the doctrine, God's word, the authority to take hold, take root in a life. Take a look at verse 25. What happens is all glory goes to God when that happens. Now all glory to God, who is able to make you strong, everyday person. Just as my good news says, this message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you Gentiles, a plan kept secret from the beginning of time, but now, as the prophets foretold, as the eternal God has commanded, this message is now made known to all Gentiles everywhere so that they too might believe, and just like Jessica said, might obey him. Verse 27, all glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Paul's writing a letter to everyday people, men, women, young, old, different races, imperfect people like you and me. 16 chapters telling them the truth about their sin. The truth that Jesus is the only way, the only solution to your sin problem. And then he reminds them that the one who has made a way, the one who knew you, who knows you today, every fiber of your being, every hair on your head, every neuron in your brain, God knows you. And that one is able to strengthen you. He's able to help you in your time of need. And he's able to use you because that's his plan. Someone here today might say, yeah, it might be true for you, Andrew, but I remember what the angel said in the beginning of this sermon. Hey, do you remember the angel at the beginning of the story? Guess what? The angel doubts you. The angel sees your mess. He sees your past, that angel. He sees your human nature, and the angel doubts that you're going to come through. But here's what you can't miss today. As Paul reminds you and me here right now, you are more than your mess. You are so much more than that mess that you know you're in right now. You're an everyday person. We know you've got problems, but don't listen to the doubt. Don't listen to the lie. You're more than your mess because God's got a plan. And his plan includes everyday people just like you and just like me. And not only does he have a plan for you, he's counting on you. And he can give you the strength. You don't have it. It's true. You can earn it yourself. You're right, but he can give it to you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he can make that truth known to you right now at the fiber of your being, and then he can empower you to do great things. Now you're building a kingdom for yourself, maybe, but God says, I've got a greater kingdom. It's so much bigger than yourself. That one has overpromised long enough. You know where it delivers, and you're in a mess. God says, give it to me. I'm ready to use you. It's my whole plan. And I need you. I'm counting on you. This is the gospel. I came here to do one thing today. It was to remind you that there is no other plan but you. And God's counting on you today. So here's what you can do. There's two applications. One is this. You can decide that God can count on you once and for all. Maybe you're not on this list yet. But today you can decide, God can count on me. If he thinks I can do this plan of his, fine. Today is the day he can count on me. I will serve him. I will give my time and I will give my talent if he provides a way. And someone else here today, it wasn't time and talent for you. For you today, it's giving. Not for a plane, not for a beach house. It's God's convicting you because he's saying, I want you to give. I want you to give to the Christmas offering. I want you to give to your church because it helps spread the truth of the gospel. 
I want the truth in every hallway of every church, not just the lights on and looking pretty, and ours looks pretty. But so much more important than the beauty of the decor is the truth inside. Amen. And God wants us to give to that. So for you today, I don't know what it is, but what I want you to do is I want you to take your worship guide, open it up. You have an insert. And the insert is for two things. Number one, it's our, it's our church center app. You can sign up to serve right now. If you're ready, God, you can count on me. I'll give you my time. I'll give you my talent. Use the church center app. You can sign up to serve today. In that same app, you can sign up to give. Or if you'd like to give in person, you can give at one of our giving kiosks. But whatever you do, this is an application point today because God uses everyday people. Even in your mess, he will strengthen you and he's counting on you. And here's the only other application option you have today. And it's more important than the last two I just said. It's that our church exists to spread the gospel. And for someone here today, you know the next step for you is you need to let that gospel spread right into your own heart. For too long, you have been building that kingdom called you. And everybody's been telling you to, so it's not your fault. All of culture will say, you do you. You figure out your plan. Make sure you've got it all figured out. Make sure you're on track for the American dream. But God's word shows up and it shifts the paradigm. And all of a sudden, you start to realize what's really true. And you find out that as you've been pursuing this dream, it has not delivered like you thought it would. And then right out of the pages of a letter written by an apostle who used a scribe named Tertius to write it for him, it was carried by a woman named Phoebe. And we find that God's saying, no, no, no. I use everyday people that are all a mess. And I got a great plan. And I'm ready to strengthen them. I'm ready to dump the power of the Holy Spirit on them. I'm ready to see them do greater things than they could have ever done on their own. But I'm going to give it. I'm going to do it through them. And I'm going to get the glory, he says. But will you place your faith in it? There's someone here today that you're ready. You're tired of the old way and you're ready for today. You're going to be an everyday person. You're going to admit your sin. Like Jessica said, you'll repent. That means to admit you need a savior. You've got it wrong. God's word has it right. I need to align myself with it. It's humbling. It's hard. It doesn't feel good right away. The truth is difficult sometimes, but then out of that mess, God's ready to make a message from your life. If that's you and you need that today, it would be the privilege of my life to pray for you. Will you bow your heads? Will you close your eyes? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, because we need right standing with you. We know we're here for a reason, and we've seen it today. God, we want to be in right standing, but we can't earn it on our own. We've got too much of a mess. What the angel doubts about us, there's truth to it. But we know the truth of your word, and that you sent your son in our place for our sins. When we were yet sinners, you loved us, God, we didn't get right first. You wanted us in our mess so that you could do something through it. God, I pray for people here today once and for all that they would place their faith in your son. The forgiveness of sins you provided by his death on a cross, by his resurrection from the grave, and that if we would just call upon his name, we would be saved. And it's wonderful to know that we have a home in heaven with you. Eternity is settled because of Christ. God, you've got such a plan here and now today as we walk out of these doors. So God, for those of us that have known the gospel a long time, but maybe haven't stepped up to serve, God, you're counting on them. So I pray that they would step up, stand in the gap. God, I pray that they would say, yes, Lord, you can count on me today and give them the strength so that they can follow through. And God, I look forward, I look forward to what you're going to do in and through their life. God, we love you today. We praise you today. We thank you that your word says you have a plan that involves us. And God, I say on behalf of our church, you can count on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for experiencing this message with us. If you've been blessed, you can give a one-time or reoccurring gift at newdaychurch.cc forward slash giving or text any amount on your smartphone right now to 413-200-3040. 
We'd love to connect with you even more. So be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and don't forget about our awesome free app where you can find all things New Day. May God bless you, and we hope to see you again soon.